Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where we take a look at the readings from Holy Scripture from the Daily Mass readings. And today is Wednesday of the 19th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today we're following that passage of Scripture yesterday where we're talking about those who strayed and how with the 99 still in the right place that the the shepherd will go after the one and, and return the stray uh, to the fold. And here we have, I think, a kind of a practical example of, uh, of a way that we can continue to keep restoration happening in the church and how we can keep the, the peace of the church moving forward in a powerful way. And uh, here Jesus talks about what to do when you have someone who sins against you. And again, the, the word against you is not found in all of the, uh, the uh, texts of this particular passage, but most of them. And in, in a broader sense, you could say, if your brother sins, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. And again, one of the things we're talking about here is one of the spiritual works of mercy, of correction. And this is something that is hard. It's a, it's a, a serious responsibility. And one that has to be taken seriously, though, especially if someone has sinned against you. Because if someone has sinned against us, it's our responsibility to go to that person and to talk about that disruption between the two of us alone. And one of the things that uh, is hard sometimes to do is to talk about that. And often I, I, you know, just kind of encourage people to kind of use what I call or what has been called by many others, an I message. In other words, talk about how it affected you, not what that person did. So you can say, I just have to tell you that when you said that uh, the other day, that really hurt me. I was really hurt by that. Now you're not calling him a, a nasty person. You're talking about how it affected you. And one of the things that happens is if he listens... You've won your brother. The two of you are again at peace. How good is that? If you can go to each other. Sometimes we let it fester. And we, we do not talk to the other person. And find out and clarify what actually has taken place. Oftentimes that person didn't mean it the way that we took it. Or something else might be going on. Or that person might be going through a tough time. And they just kind of had a rough day. We just really don't know. And then... Once we get through with, with that, if that person responds positively, we've won the day. It is a beautiful day of reconciliation. And uh, that person can really ask for your forgiveness. But, however, if he does not listen, what are you to do? Talk to him again, but take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. This is important that if there is something that is very serious that has disrupted uh, the relationship and it really needs to be, be healed and solved, uh, 
take one or two others so that there can be a witness to the talk that the two of you are having. And that person can not only clarify to the other person what is going on inside of your heart, but may also be able to clarify to you what might be going on inside of the other person so that everything can be uh, confirmed uh, by a witness. This is very important if you have kind of a, a difference that has not been able to be e easily reconciled to take someone with you. And again, in talking about this, to take the situation upon yourself, you know, that when this happened, this really hurt me or this, uh, you know, really had an impact on me negatively. There's a lot of different ways that you can posture yourself on that. And then with someone present, you can, again, try to bring about reconciliation. And then finally, he says this, and if he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. Now, one thing in, that I want to say is that often people skip the first two uh, levels of reconciliation and go right to the third one, and they go out and broadcast it to other people. And also, when it talks about telling it to the church, what I always encourage people to do is not tell it to the whole church, but tell it to the leader. Because there then you have someone who is a part of the church and can help you, again, bring reconciliation. Because that's the goal. The goal is not to devalue the other person to the church, but rather to help getting help from the church to reconcile with the individual. So I often encourage people when it talks about telling it to the church that go to the go to your pastor, go to one of the priests on staff, go to somebody in leadership that has the ability to help reconcile. If you just take it and broadcast it through the church, that's gossip. But if you take it to someone who can help, then they, uh, you know, they're powerless because they've not been given the opportunity to help you. And then it says, if he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Now, here I think the, the obvious immediate thought, at least it would be to me, the immediate thought might be, well, to treat them as a Gentile or a tax collector is to treat them as though they're the enemy. Treat them as though they're not a part of what we're doing. Treat them as though they are one of the, you know, those evil, scurrilous tax collectors, which Jesus would understand at his time, and, and the people would more than we do today. Uh, but the tax collectors, of course, were seen as, as a part of the Jewish people, but betraying the Jewish people. But for the purpose of really seeing what Jesus is saying here. Think about how Jesus treated the Gentiles. More importantly, how did Jesus treat a tax collector? He had two major encounters. One was with Matthew, also called Levi, who in fact wrote this gospel. And the other was a little man by the name of Zacchaeus. Remember Zacchaeus? He was climbed up in a tree in order to see Jesus. And Jesus came and had him to come down from the tree because he wanted to go and have lunch with him or dinner with him. <clears throat> so what we're seeing is that in treating this person who has sinned against you, <clears throat> who has not reconciled, what you're really being called to do is to treat them with redemptive love to still treat them with the love that God has, even for those who have greatly sinned against him. So the end result is still the same. At whatever level this person refuses, love continues to flow toward that individual in order that they might be able to be received again and reconciled with you, with your brothers and sisters, and with the church. So I think that's something that we have to remember is that God's heart with those who sin against others within the church is always for reconciliation at every level. And even if they refuse the church and stand firmly and strongly in their sin, God still treats them with redemptive love, love of calling them back to the heart of the gospel. And that is the love that he wants us to have. 
So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, this was a good day uh, to, again, delve into the Scripture. And uh, I just would encourage you, if you have someone that has sinned against you, to prayerfully consider how you might go to them and uh, maybe talk to them about what happened so that there can be reconciliation. There isn't anything worse than going to Mass and realizing that you have awed against another person. In fact, Jesus said that if, if we lack forgiveness, then really we have to go and get reconciled first before we come and offer ourselves to him. And in fact, that's where the whole uh, peace, the uh, passing of the peace uh, in the Eucharistic prayer comes from. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. And now uh, offer each other the sign of peace. We need to make sure that we have peace with all people uh, as we go before our Heavenly Father. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.